As we begin to create more robust maps, there'll be times where we want to include manipulation of the fields, which involve more than one function. The user defined map function permits for one or more input variables to flow through multiple functions, yielding one or more desired output variables. The user defined map function can then be saved and reused across any map requiring the same conversion logic. The map function will appear within the component explorer. Let's take a look at exercise 12, how to create a user defined map function before testing the process in exercise 13. So for exercise 12, the database insert requires the customer ID field to be populated with a unique alphanumeric key for each customer record. For our training purposes, we assume the customer name and the phone number do not change, and we can concatenate these values to create a unique key. However, this requires more than one map function to create a valid ID. In this exercise, we'll create a reusable user-defined map function to string together multiple function steps resulting in a proper ID field. So we're going to open our Salesforce account to database insert map. And then in the functions column, we're going to click add. This is going to be a user defined function, and we are going to create a new function. So we are going to, in the new tab, we're going to type in the name of the function, which is customer underscore ID create. Now that we've done that in the left input columns, we're going to set uh, an input name and an input phone number. So we're going to add inputs, one being name and one being phone. Now that we've added the inputs, we'll want to add the output, which is the ID we want to create. So again, remember, we wanted to take their name and their phone number, which we thought would be um, static elements and wouldn't change and use those to create the ID. So now that we have the name and phone number inputs and we have our desired output, we have to create the, the steps to achieve that. So we're going to click add for a new step. And the first one is going to be string remove. We're going to leave the original string blank, but under string to remove, we're going to put one space and then hit OK. And then we're going to map, map the name to the original string and string remove. Perfect. Now we're going to add a second step. And the second step is going to be a left character trim, and we're going to do a fixed to length of four. And we map the phone to the original string. So now that we mapped the name to the string remove, the phone to the original string left character trim, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add another step, which is going to be string append. In this case, we're going to leave all three of these the same. We're not going to format that. But we're going to take the result from our string remove, which is our one, and map it to the original string of string append. And then we're going to take the result of our left character trim to our characters to append. And then we're going to map that result to our ID. So basically what it's doing is it's taking our name, concatenating with our phone, the last four of our phone, and mapping that as our ID output. So we can save and close. And now you can see we have this new function. So now what we have to do is we're going to have to map the name to the name of it. We're going to have to map the phone number to the phone number. And then we'll expand our destination. And remember, we wanted this to be the customer underscore ID. So we take the ID output or result and map it to the destination profile. All right. So we are going to save and close after we've completed that. And that's going to complete exercise 12. I'm going to save the process. Now for exercise 13, we're going to test the process. So the necessary components to complete the main workflow are created. So now we have to link the components together on the canvas and execute the process in test mode to review if the documents were successfully committed to the database. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect the start shape to the map and the map shape to the database. So as you can see, I just drag and drop the green arrow or the red arrow until it hovered over and became green and let it go. 
As you can see, sometimes you can get very close and have it actually look like it's connected, but if it's not a green arrow, it will not be connected. So now that our process is connected, we can test it and we're going to save. It's going to prompt us to save. We're going to run this on our test Atom Cloud and we're going to run our test. So now what we can see is the black box around the database connector tells us that we're looking at this and we can look at the connection data for both of the documents that wrote. So we have our gene point, which is the name and the last four of the phone number. So as you can see, the name of it is gene point. The last four of the phone number is 3450. So it wrote as gene point 3450. We can view the other data. Same thing with edge communications. Edge communications was the name. The last four was 6000. So you could see it took away the space between edge and communications and wrote that 6000, the last four digits of the phone number to the name. All right, that completes exercises 12 and 13.